Hi, this is Joe Still. I'm the course designer, lead instructor at thecorecourse.com. This is a short pre-course video on the HP 12C financial calculator. It's really important that you take a look at this, download the pre-course workbook, and go through the problems before you come to the class. This will really help your experience in the class. It doesn't take very long. Good luck, and we'll see you at the live training. Let's look at some of the basic functions on the HP 12C financial calculator. First thing you need to know is this calculator is a three layer menu calculator. The first layer is activated by just pressing the buttons themselves and whatever the keys say in white is what the calculator will do. The second layer is triggered by pressing this button here, the gold F, letter F button. If you press that first, the next key you press will do what the button says above it, also in gold. And the third menu is the blue menu, triggered by the G button. Uh, once you press the G, the next button you press will do what it says in the bottom of that button in blue. So to turn the calculator on, lower left hand corner, just press that button. That's the on button, press it again, turns it off. Uh, let's take a look at how to clear the 12C. So there's five different ways to clear the HP 12C. The way that we will always do it in the workshops is by pressing gold F first, and then pressing this button here that says CLX to the left of the enter button. That clears everything in the calculator, gets rid of all what we call the ghosts in the machine. The next thing you need to know how to do on the 12C is how to change the number of significant places. So significant places are the number of zeros that appear to the right of the decimal. Currently you see two significant places. Let's say I want to change it to four significant places. Here's my key presses. Gold F and then press the number four. You notice now we have four zeros to the right of the decimal. If you want to uh, just chop off the pennies completely, press gold F and then zero. That gets rid of all of them. The next thing you need to know how to do on the 12C is how to do what's called changing sign convention. And that happens off of this button here called CHS. So let's say for example that I want to enter negative 300 as a payment value. Here's my key presses. 300, then press change signs and you'll see a little minus sign shows up in front of it. And then I would just press PMT. That's how I'd enter negative 300. So CHS is the button on the 12C that changes the sign convention. So we'll clear it again, FCLX. And the last setup function you know how to do on the 12C is to understand if you are in beginning of period mode or end of period mode. So take a look at the bottom of the number 7 and the bottom of the number 8. On the 12C you see it says BEG on the bottom of the 7 and END on the bottom of the 8. Those are triggered by the blue G button. So if I press blue G number 7 you'll notice the word begin appears in the display. We do not want the word begin in the display. So we press the blue G button one more time, press the 8 for end, and that shuts it off. So it's sort of reverse logic doublespeak. You want to be in end mode, and the way that you know you're in end mode is if you do not see the word begin in your display. What begin and end do is they change when payments are considered main and received when we do time value of money problems. And we assume that the investor receives the benefit of all the payments for the entire term that we're calculating. So always be in end mode on the HP 12C. The next thing we're going to cover on the 12C is what's referred to as the number of payments per year. So here's what you need to remember on the 12C. The 12C is by default a one payment per year calculator. So what does payments per year mean? Payments per year has to do with the number of periods in your calculation. So for example, let's say that I'm doing a monthly payment problem. That's a 12 payment per year problem. Let's say that I'm looking at measuring price appreciation or price depreciation or entering cash flows. That is a one payment per year modality. So again, by default, the 12C is a one payment per year calculator. The way you change the 12C when you're doing a time value of money calculation uh, from annual, which is one payment per year, to monthly, which is 12 payments per year, is by pressing the blue G key and then the N or the I key, which we'll cover next. So you'll notice on the N it says 12 times in blue on the bottom and the I says 12 divide uh, in blue on the bottom of the I button. 
So whenever you're doing a monthly calculation problem, when you enter your term and your rate, which is what N and I stand for, you always press the blue G before you press the N and before you press the I. And that's how you convert the 12C to 12 payments per year or monthly modality. If you do not press the blue G button when you enter the N and I values, then you leave the calculator in one payment per year mode. So it just depends on what kind of a problem you're doing. All right, let's talk next about the time value of money buttons on the HP 12C. Here you have N. N stands for term or time periods. I stands for rate, yield, or interest. The I value is entered as a whole number. The calculator automatically moves the decimal two places to the left. PV stands for present value. Present value is a lump sum that occurs once at the beginning of an investment. PMT stands for payment. The thing that's unique about payment is that it occurs every time period in the investment. And FV stands for future value. So future value is a lump sum that occurs once at the end of the investment. Now here's a real simple time value of money problem. Let's say that I'm going to borrow $100,000. And that is my present value. I'm going to borrow this money on monthly payments, and my monthly payments are going to be based on a 30-year amortization. So I'm going to enter my 30 years this way, 30 blue G N, and then just to keep it simple, let's say that my uh, interest rate is 12% per year, so it's going to be 12 blue G little i. And the way time value of money works, the logic of it is find three and solve for the fourth. So I'm just going to press PMT, and that will give me my monthly payment. So let's do that. Always, always, always clear the calculator first. So it's FCLX. Then I'll type in 100,000. Press PV. Now watch what I do to change it to monthly. 30 blue G N. And the same thing with the interest rate. 12 blue G I. I have three, I solve for the fourth, now just press PMT. And I get 1,029. Let's go back to that uh, significant place thing. If I press gold F and the number two, you'll see that it actually is 1,028 and 61 cents. And you'll notice that it's negative. And the reason being, this money here, this $100,000, this is considered money received, that's a positive, and this is considered money paid out, and that's why it's a negative. So it always changes the sign convention automatically on the back end of your equation. All right, let's do one more time value money problem measuring price appreciation. Let's say, for example, I'm looking to buy a property for $200,000. $200,000. Now watch this, C-H-S-P-V. I have to change the sign convention because it's assumed that I paid this money out, therefore it's negative. So I'm going to hold the property for four years, 4N. Now you'll notice I do not press this blue G button in this problem because this is one payment per year mode. And let's assume that I'm going to impute an anticipated rate of appreciation of 2%, just nominal 2% uh, appreciation. Again, do not press the blue G key on this problem because this problem talks about one payment per year. We're, press, we're measuring price appreciation and the 12C is by default a one payment per year calculator. So I have three, PV, N, and I. I solve for the fourth, so I'm going to clear this calculator first. 200,000, change signs PV, 4N 2I now just press future value and this property should be worth 218 or 216 rather 486 43 and to go back to that significant place thing if I press F0 that'll just chop off the pennies